picked up this beautiful wine cabinet at a garage sale. I got it really cheap because it had these big gouges out of it. I'm going to show you how to repair this piece of furniture. Here's the before, now here's the after. Don't spend hundreds of dollars on a repairman to come and repair your furniture. Yes, you could do it yourself. It's so easy that I can show you how to do this just using your finger and a brush. Okay, so you can see we've got some big deep gouges in there. And you want to look at them and look at the shape that you're going to form to. What you want to do is you want to put that putty um, not exactly to the form, but over. That way you can sand to it. We're going to be using some of this DAP plastic wood. Uh, it dries in about, it says two to six hours, but what I'm doing is I'm going to put the putty on and leave it overnight. So one of the first things I usually do, and you won't see anybody tell you this, but I drill holes into the damaged area, and I go in about anywhere from a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch deep. And that, what that does is it helps the putty anchor onto something. You know, you've seen where people do repairs, and next thing you know, it gets slightly hit, and the part that they had repaired, you know, it gets knocked off. Well, this helps prevent it. So this uh, putty is. Uh, it's kind of a, I want to say it's a water base because there's no smell to it at all. And what you're doing now is you're applying it, uh, you know, first, you know, you're, you're trying to shove putty into that hole that you just drilled. That way it anchors on to uh, something. And, you know, just get it in there first. You know, you're not worried about forming it right now. You're just getting it in there deep so the putty is, you know, binding or bonding to something, sticking to something. So you want to just kind of put a coat on there of just once you've got uh, the base coat, you know, in there, uh, then you want to start building up to, you know, out, so to speak. So, you know, you got a lot of putty sticking above what the detail requires. You know, you can use a putty knife if you want. Um, and I do use a putty knife, don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, but, you know, I was sitting here and, you know, I, I just needed to quickly get this done. Um, it's in an area where it's in a room that's dark, so you're not even going to notice. Even if I did a bad repair on it, you're not going to notice it. So just get a lot of it on there. Um, again, you're just building up layer by layer. Uh, you know, if you want to let it dry for a little bit, you know, come back in a half an hour and apply some more on. Uh, this stuff is pretty good, and I, apparently it's three times stronger than the other previous stuff. So after about you know, the next day, I should say, I came back after it dried, and um, now I'm taking some 150 sandpaper and just you know lightly sanding it. You know, don't put a lot of pressure onto it. You know, it is you know uh, putty. You know, after all, it's not bondo. And just lightly sand it. You know, and sand it to the shape that uh, you're trying to match. It's it's really not that hard. What I did is I just folded my uh, sandpaper backwards. This is, has an adhesive back, this sandpaper, so when I fold it backwards, you can see it's in two pieces stuck together. And it's just sanding away. I think you, you know how to sand. If, if not, uh, if you mess up, you think you went a little too much, just put some more putty on there, let it dry, and then come back and do it again. So there's, you know, you're really not damaging anything. The only thing you'd be damaging is sanding areas that don't need to be sanded. pretty self-explanatory here. Keep your uh, sandpaper going, you know, you know, with the grain. So when you do stain it, the lines will follow, you know, a natural grain pattern. To me, this is the whole fun part about uh, the repair. If you can, if you can put putty on this and you know, make the shape exact to what you were doing before. This is exactly what guys at body shops do. They put Bondo on and they match what's around, you know, the area of the uh, fender or, or door. I gotta say one thing, while you're sanding, uh, you know, sanding uh, can be very therapeutic, if you know what I mean.
any sharp corners, you just kind of roll them around a little bit so you don't have a sharp corner. Just kind of break that edge there a little bit. It's pretty simple. That looks pretty good there. I'm going to be using some uh, Verithane uh, stain. Uh, I'm using a red oak. I'm using red oak because that's what I had. You can really get crazy with color matching if you want. Uh, this is the first uh, coat. I, I forgot to turn the camera on, so please excuse me. Uh, kind of halfway through here. Anyway, the light is playing with the uh, with this video right now, so it looks a little red, but uh, and it'll probably dry with a little red in it. And uh, you know, just the the parts where it looks a little light, you know, just take your brush and you know, again, your brush stroke should be left to right. Uh, just you know, apply stain in that area, let it dry. And then just put some more and each time you put a coat on there it just gets darker and darker believe me this is on the ground nobody's going to notice if you think it looks terrible i'm telling you nobody's going to notice isn't that beautiful all right guys well again i've got a lot of fix-it videos and cooking videos and car repair videos so don't, uh, don't be afraid to check me out and see uh, what I'm doing. So I'll see you at my next video.